Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, to another episode of the Daniel Teachers Experience. Folks, today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the current events that have gone on over the last week or so. And then, as we get later on to the episode, then we'll get into the kind of psychology aspect of it. So, let's start off with something that has nothing to do with psychology, philosophy, or meaning of life. Donda came out recently. I guess when you're listening to this, it'll be almost like a week or something. So I don't know if you guys are Kanye West fans, I don't know if you guys listen to his music, if you listen to rap or hip hop or that genre at all. It was interesting. I heard it and I'm such a I'm I'm such a credible and qualified candidate to give my review and, and two cents on, on rap and hip hop. So this this uh, this is quite interesting. That's not actually true. But what was interesting was I don't know if you've heard it, but if you haven't heard it, I'd recommend you to check it out. Because you might one of the things that I oftentimes find with Kanye is if you have an album once you hear one or two songs, it's not like the entire album, the entire project is, is a replica of those two songs, right? So I believe there's 27 songs on the album, technically like 22 or 23, but there's a couple remixes in there. And each song has its own kind of vibe, it has its own production and, and its own interesting sound and tune. Some of them sound more uplifting and happy, some of them are more a little dark, a little sadder. So I think, I think it was very interesting, man. I think it, it was interesting to listen to. I definitely didn't love all of them, but I didn't hate all of them either, so it was interesting. For me, it was a mixed bag. Some of them I liked a lot. Some of them I was not a fan of. Obviously, this is a part where music is super subjective. I can say I loved something. You could say that you saw it, you listened to it, and you were like, you know, I think it's absolute trash, right? So it's just different people's opinions on, on different matters, and if you like it and you loved it, I'm happy for you. If you listened to it, you didn't like it, it's not for everyone. And if you haven't listened to it, and if you're not doing anything, give it a chance. Skip the Donda chant. That has no business being in there. Just skip the first track, quote unquote. But yeah, man, so that was dope. I, it's, I recently got into the excitement of just people dropping new music. I think it's so cool. Whoever you listen to, whether it's the Drakes, the Kid Cuddies, the Taylor Swifts, the Selena Gomez's, the Camila Cabello, there's something about an artist that you love releasing a, a set of work a set of tracks where you haven't heard them on, even though you've heard so many other songs, even though they have songs about so many different topics, it's always interesting, one, to hear the wordplay, what they do with the lyrics, to hear the production in the background, certain things that they chose to do. And really, when you have a project, it's nice when you get a theme in a project, right? There's a, there's a certain narration. It's almost like a story being told. So I think that's one of the real beauties of just, you know, these artists that you really listen to. If there's one person who really st sticks out to you, you get to listen to their project and go through it and go, oh man, this is dope, this is awesome. So, yeah, Donda was interesting. Donda was interesting. A couple of tracks that maybe I'll listen to again because I've, I've also heard people saying it's one of those where when I first listened to the, to the album, I didn't like it at all. I was like, nah, I'm not a fan. The second time I listened to it, I liked it a little bit more. Every time I've listened to it, I've liked the album a little bit more. I don't know why that is, so it's been interesting. It's been interesting, man, but you definitely going through it and you listen to the lyrics and, and you listen to some of the things done like production wise, it's, it's hard not to appreciate. But that's just my opinion. So Donda came out, that was dope. Two huge things that happened in the world of football. First of all, this might be, when I say football, I mean soccer. This might be the craziest football transfer window in the last couple of years. Folks, if you have one megastar moving a club, that's huge. Like for example, when Neymar was leaving Barcelona to go to PSG, right? That was, that was huge, that was gigantic. In this transfer window, we had not only did we have Lionel Messi leaving his boyhood club of Barcelona to go to PSG, but we also had Cristiano Ronaldo going back to his club of Manchester United. That is nuts, folks. That is insane. I've been in and out of football for the last couple of years, kind of looking into it, looking at highlights and then staying away from it. But dude, with these new teams, with these new players, I can't not... I can't not look into it. Like, I have to. It is so exciting. It is so cool. For anyone who's a football fan, they know exactly what I'm talking about. Whenever you have a player who you think is incredible, you take them off of a team, you put them on a completely another team in a completely another league, it's always the question of, can you replicate that success, right? There's always that Cristiano Ronaldo versus Lionel Messi debate, who's the, arguably, who is the best football player on the planet right now? And arguably, if you're talking about the greatest people to ever play the sport, both of those names are in there, you know, undoubtedly. I think the Premier League gets very interesting out with Ronaldo back. I think Harry Kane had an amazing season at Spurs. Lukaku is going to be fascinating, what he does for Chelsea. Man City, without a striker, are doing really, really well because their midfield is nasty, man. If you folks, if, if you've been watching their highlights of Man City and how they wrecked Arsenal, you'd know. Sterling, 
um, Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne. They've just got a bunch of killers over there. Very high pressure. They push forward, so that's going to be exciting to watch. Liverpool will always be interesting. Arsenal is doomed to be an average club. So Premier League will be dope, man. Premier League will be dope. I think PSG is going to dominate France. And the Champions League, that'll be exciting. That'll be exciting. Mbappe, Neymar, Messi, all on the same team. Not to mention a huge favorite of mine, Sergio Ramos, man. So if there was a, if if you don't watch football and you want to get into it, I recommend that you just check out the Manchester United highlights, PSG highlights, and maybe like Man City highlights. Check these out, man, and I, and I think I think you'll be surprised. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. If you want to see the best of the best, that's where I'd go. Man United is usually like a kind of like an average team. But I got to say, man, they've made some good purchases. They, be, they bought Rafael Varane, they bought Jadon Sancho, and now Cristiano Ronaldo. It's, uh, it's pretty sick, man. It's, it's pretty awesome. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. In a, and I'm super stoked to see what happens in the world of football and what goes on. And, and it's just it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time to watch. God bless sports, folks. They bring people together. Isn't that dope? On to our next bit of news. Man, I'm covering this stuff quickly. Jake Paul fought Tyron Woodley. It'll be about a week when this comes out, about a week ago. What did you folks think about that? Did you see the fight? Do you have any thoughts? Did you not see the fight? For anyone who missed it, basically all you gotta know is Tyron Woodley in his last, like let's say four MMA fights, his kryptonite is this, he waits too long. He waits for that perfect punch. He, he waits for that, that power punch. And when he hits you, he hits you. Don't get me wrong. He's won titles like that. But sometimes his lack of output, or not sometimes, what's led to his downfall in, a, in his MMA career was his lack of output. He didn't throw enough because he waited for that perfect shot. Well, sometimes you just don't have that opportunity to throw the shot. Or sometimes instead of throwing 16 shots, you only throw three good ones. But if you miss those three good ones, it's like, well, the other person has thrown a bunch more at you. And even if they haven't landed them all, if a judge is looking at it and they're saying they're throwing more at you, you have to defend more, it just looks better in the other guy's regard. So that was a big thing going into Woodley's for this one. I believe there was a single round where Woodley threw like four punches. Like for, like under 10, like for 100%. I want to say two punches in a round. A round is three minutes, by the way. The biggest things were this. Paul landed two or three really nice combinations Woodley landed one nice right hand. It kind of hit Jake Paul in the ear area. He fell back. Many people were saying it could have been a knockdown had there not been the ropes. He fell back. He leaned against the ropes, and then he was able to return to his posture and return to his stance. Overall, it was exciting. It was entertaining. And Jake Paul won by split decision. Now, personally, when I was watching it, I thought it was close. Man, I was edging it towards Tyron. I thought Tyron Woodley had won. I know that Ben Askren also thinks Tyron Woodley won. I know that I'm biased and I'm a big Tyron Woodley fan, so you, that's why I shouldn't be a judge. But a lot of people, the majority of the people thought that Jake Paul won. I, I wouldn't be upset about it either way because I, I thought both of them did well. I thought Jake definitely had more of an output. He threw more combinations. Maybe it was a psychological thing because I saw Tyron walking forward more and that, that gave me a mindset of like, oh, he's controlling the, I was going to say octagon. Maybe he's controlling the range. He's controlling the ring. So that kind of put me in that sort of a mindset. But man, it was interesting. It was interesting. I'm glad Jake Paul didn't lose because I, I like the eyes that he's bringing to boxing. I like that my friends who don't pay attention to boxing at all know who Jake Paul is and know when he's fighting. That's very cool to me, dude. That's very cool to me. The only unfortunate thing is I realized that it's a, it's a, what do you call it? It's a trend, right? So the moment that young man loses, there goes the hype of boxing. That's the unfortunate thing. Boxing, unfortunately, isn't in a place where MMA is, where there's, there's one fight that everybody tunes in for. It's the main event. It's very top-heavy. Whereas MMA right now, you're talking UFC, Bellator, 1FC. It's very... It, there's not just one main event. You show up for the main card. Even, like, the ends of the undercard, man. There's a pay-per-view coming up that has Kamaru Usman versus Colby Covington, two, as the main event. Co-main event is Rose Namajunas versus Wei Li, and then before that, you have Michael Chandler versus Justin Gagey. So three fights, in my opinion, those could have been all main events of their own pay-per-views, yet they're all on one card. And the two other fights I forgot about because the, because the last three are so exciting, I know those are also amazing fighters, so I don't want to miss any fight on the main card. So that is something that, unfortunately, boxing does not have. When you go very top-heavy, you the, the beauty is that your stars get elevated a lot, but no one else matters. And if people are only paying money to see that one guy, it's not healthy for the promotion. The promotion is not a person. If Conor McGregor retires tomorrow, the UFC will be fine. And that's why they're winning. 
you don't put all your chips on a fighter or on an athlete or on a celebrity because one day because they're they're not infinite right it's finite how much they can give you and the resources so the moment they take the gloves off what happens to your business right so the ufc and mma promotions have done a good thing in my opinion they, they haven't modeled boxing in that route of only focusing on the the main event so i think that's great i think that that's absolutely awesome man and i I think it's dope. I'm super excited. I'm curious where the celebrity thing is going to go. My own opinion of it is I think they're going to go from like celebrity boxing to celebrity kickboxing to celebrity grappling. And then eventually I think it's going to move out of martial arts. I don't know why it came into boxing, why it went into that martial arts area, but then it's going to go to like celebrity tennis and celebrity dance and, you know, celebrity, I don't know, man, yoga. But I think it's going to veer out of there. And if it's involved in something where you're not actually physically harming someone or causing them brain damage, I think that'll... May it be more attractive to more celebrities to come in and give it a try. So it should be interesting, folks. It should be super, super interesting. Yeah, man. Donda, football, Paul and Woodley. It's been good. It's been exciting. It's, there's, there's a lot of things going on, and it's um, very interesting to listen to. All right, folks. In the, in the name of Dave Chappelle, can I be real? And then someone says, be real, man. Be real. <laughs> Chappelle show. I don't know if you've seen it. What am I doing? So... What this podcast is, this is going to, the tone's going to change a lot, so stick with me here. I put out my opinion on things, right? And that's my opinion, unless I otherwise explicitly state that it's a fact. One of the things that I'm going to run into is, as I say my opinion on here and on other social media platforms, I'm going to have people reaching out to me who are either going to disagree with me, fair enough, or they're going to misunderstand me, fair enough. Right now, I'm in a position where if I have one or two people reaching out and saying, Daniel, is this what you think or I disagree? I can have a conversation. I can have a discussion. But once, if one day this podcast gets bigger and if one day the following grows, there's no way that you can discuss these things with 50 people who message you every day and go, what do you mean by that? Clarify this point. I disagree with you. Why are you leaving me on red? So when someone has, let's say, 300,000 followers. I understand how easy it is to be misunderstood. In the past, I've made videos, for example, like that sexual empowerment one. I was misunderstood and taken taken out of context. And then as I was trying to like message people, and be like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. This is what I meant. I was like, man, I was like, this is exhausting. I was like, this is so exhausting. This wasn't what I meant. You're putting words in my mouth and I have to chase you down in order to correct what I actually meant. What's going to happen in the future is I can't afford to do that. I don't have the time or energy to chase people down who disagree with me and go, hey, no, this is what I really think. Especially not over text message, especially not over text message. So I'm going to figure out what what I'm going to do with that going forward because I want to have discussions and I don't want to be a person who says they want to have discussions. But then when people disagree, I go, "Ah, I don't have the patience to talk to you. Like, no, 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 I'm going to become what I hate. I'm going to become the very thing that I made fun of earlier on when I started this podcast. So I think what it's going to turn into is if people from now on like really disagree with me and they're open to having a conversation, I will definitely either bring them on the podcast or just meet them one-on-one to talk about it because I'm not a fan of texting. I think it's the easiest way to misunderstand someone. And dude, you, it's, why, why would you have a complex, articulate conversation over text? I, I do not understand that. Why? It is so hard. It is so tricky. It is so easy to misunderstand someone. So I'm not a fan of that. Let's talk about something that I posted on my Instagram um, a couple days ago. I said something along the lines of this. So here's what I saw, right? I'm on Instagram. And I follow certain hashtags. I've told you folks about hashtag motivation, how fun that's been. I follow a hashtag that's called hashtag self-care, right? Normally, the things in there are like, oh, I'm taking care of my mental health. I'm happier. Oh, you know, I I hit burnout because I realized I need to take a break. Things of that nature. I come across a photo of a woman. She happened to be a woman who was severely overweight. Severely. Now, folks, let me say this. Obese. I'm not going to say overweight because... In our society, we look at girls who are Instagram models and we go, oh, if you don't look at that, if you don't look like an Instagram model, you must be overweight. No, that's not true. Gaining 5, 10, 15 pounds, man, that's normal. That's life. It happens. I'm talking about the extreme, right? I'm talking about, I mean, it, it's bad. Like, it, it's really bad. Like, your, your BMI index is through the roof. You go on the weight scale. You don't like the number you see. You go to the doctor and he tells you to lose weight. That's, that's what I'm speaking about. Uh, specifically. Not, oh, you looked at a girl on Instagram, she looks skinny, you don't look like her, so that means you're fat. No, 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 no. That, that's terrible. 
Regardless, I saw this woman who was clearly obese. She posted a photo. It was hashtag self care. And the caption said something along the lines of, I love my body no matter what anyone tells me. I love my body no matter what anyone tells me, or no matter what anyone says. Now, what do I think when I see that? First of all, I get upset because I know that you can be happier and healthier if you were not satisfied with this body. I believe in whatever situation you're in, and this, this was the, the words of Carl Rogers, humanistic psychologist, you have to accept yourself for who you are before you can begin to move forward. And I love that idea. My worry is that a lot of people accept themselves for who they are, but then they don't want to move forward, whether they think it's too hard, whether they think I'm happy the way that I am, maybe other people around them downplay the consequences. So I'm in this weird place from a psychology student who's also studying psychology in relation to physical health, specifically a field of psychology known as health psychology. And I'm reading about all these terrible things that happen to people who are obese and how there's a positive correlation between obesity and depression. The more obese someone is, the greater chances they have of experiencing depressive symptoms and vice versa. The greater chances, that the more depressive symptoms someone's experiencing, the greater chance they have to become obese. So they're both linked Together, they are both intertwined. There's a plethora of other mental health problems that come along with being obese, not to mention the physical health problems. I made a post about that too on my, on my Instagram, man, about eating a lot of food, eating lots of fats. What does that lead to? The high cholesterol leads to plaque buildup in your arteries, right? What, is, what are arteries? They help transfer blood across the body to the different organs. When your arteries get filled up, when those arteries get narrow, well, that constricts your, the, the passing of those nutrients, the passing of your blood. What does blood carry? Blood carries oxygen. Thus, there's less oxygen going to your blood and leaving your blood. What happens when that artery gets fully clogged because of all the plaque buildup, which comes from cholesterol, fat, and, and other things that people eat? That, my friends, is when you experience a myocardial infarction. That is a heart attack. So... When I see someone engaging in this unhealthy behavior, I get upset. It, it, it's unfortunate because I didn't read anything about, I'm okay the way that I look, but I want to get better. Or I understand that I'm not the prettiest, blah, 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 but I want to be healthy and happy. I didn't see that. I saw someone who was unhealthy, who was saying, it's okay to look this way. And that was fine. That was one thing, man. You live, you do, you, you could do hardcore drugs. And if that's what you want to do, who am I to tell you otherwise? We could be in a car together. You don't like wearing a seatbelt. It's your life. It's your own health that's at risk, whatever. I would never go up to someone who's unhealthy or doesn't put on a seatbelt or who smokes a cigarette and go, do you know how bad that is for you? Because that is me disrespecting your intelligence. Yes, if you're a grown adult, you know that that's bad for you, but you don't care. It's okay. You, you would rather make that decision than look out for your health, and that's okay. I, what am I gonna do, cry about it? I, no, I can't. My problem in that post what made it very sad were the comments. There were a bunch of comments and almost every single comment said things like, you're beautiful the way you are. Don't change. Uh, you're perfect like this. Don't listen to anyone else. You're a queen. And they were saying all these compliments and I was, I was, very, I was very upset because I knew they weren't real. I knew they were out of pity. I knew they were because you felt bad for her. So you felt like you had to say something. Deep down, their hearts are in the right place because they're going, oh, let me make you feel better. But in reality, what you're doing is you're, you're giving that person a false perception of how they really are. The reason why I do not advocate people to tell men or women, and the specific reason why I focus on women is that men don't do this. If my friend who has a beer belly posts a photo of himself online, yo, yo check this out, folks. This is my own opinion perception of it. Guys say insults to each other that they don't mean women say compliments to each other that they don't mean on average roughly i'm throwing it out there i'm not saying everyone i'm not generalizing right but if i had a friend who had a big belly and he posted something online a close friend of his would probably say like wow man looks like you ate the mailman or something right as a joke because they're buddies but other strangers and stuff they would probably praise him if he said hey guys this is my transformation video or, hey guys i'm going on a diet or hey guys i'm trying to become more healthy then you would praise that sort of behavior but no one would say oh man you look beautiful the way you are or oh man you look great like this because you don't think that he looks great so why would you lie to him or her whereas i see far more women because there's such a 
because weight is such a sensitive issue and we've gone so extreme and said that a woman has to be thin and lean and this and that, they're going, well, let me counter it. Let me, let me pray something that is the complete opposite. My point is this, folks, I've read the studies. I'm, I'm doing the research. Being anorexically thin is terrible for you in every way imaginable, but so is being obese. My message is why are we doing the extremes? I don't want to praise you if you're anorexic and you eat a cucumber every day, but I don't want to praise you if you're 300 pounds overweight and your chances of suffering from heart attack raise exponentially because you can't get your hands off the donuts. I don't know why people become obese. People say, oh, well, people are just lazy. Any person who's fat is because they're lazy. It's like, I'm sure there's a, there's a, there's a demographic that falls into that. Absolutely. I'm sure there's other people who just don't care about working out and they just enjoy eating whatever foods and they want to sacrifice their long-term health for short-term pleasure, man. Fair enough. I also know that there's other things like abuse and depression and mental health problems. And as your mental health problems get worse, so does your physical health problems. So it's not about labeling people who are obese as bad people. My problem is with the people who comment and go, hey, there's nothing wrong with the way you look. You're perfect the way that you are. If you recommend a diet to a person who's overweight, you're fat phobic. If you don't date a girl because she's obese, you're fat phobic. That's, um, that's troubling, folks. That's troubling to hear because that young lady is going to go to the doctor. And the doctor is going to tell her, young lady, these are the charts, right? People who have this much fat percentage, who don't exercise, who don't eat clean, who have all this stuff, their chances of suffering from a heart attack, from this, from this, from this, are this high. For your health, as a doctor, as a person who's not your friend, I am advising you, you need to lose some weight. What is that young lady going to think? She goes, well, I really like the way that I live. She's going to think, well, I posted that thing on Instagram and everybody said I look beautiful the way that I am. If I think I'm okay, and if the people around me think I'm okay, then you're the problem. You're this fat phobic doctor. Why? Why are you uh, reinforcing, what, what, are the, what do they call it? Reinforcing unattainable beauty standards. And, and that's where we get to a, to a bad place. If you're looking for a friend who's going to spare your feelings, I'm not that guy. If you're going out and you've got something stuck in your teeth and your friend goes, how do I look? A lot of people would say, yeah, you look great. I'm not that guy. And you shouldn't be either. Hey, man, you got something stuck in your teeth. Your girlfriend or something comes over, hey, man, how does this dress look? It makes you look big. It makes you look bigger than you are. <gasps> how dare you? Oh, my bad. I thought you were asking for my opinion. I thought that's how this works. I thought if, if you want me to give you a specific answer, you got to state it. You got to say, Daniel, I'm going to ask you a question and I want you to say yes, no matter what. I am. I am. And folks, don't don't get it uh, mistaken. I'm not saying that using honesty as an umbrella statement is an excuse to be hostile or mean towards individuals. Not at all. But I believe in prioritizing long term health instead of short term feelings. Treat others how you wish to be treated. I, I believe in that, man. If I let go of myself, I would hope and pray that my friends go, hey, Daniel, you got to get it together, man. You're putting on weight. You stopped exercising. You're not eating clean. Look at you. You're not working out. You, you've let yourself go. You got to get it together. I wouldn't get mad. I would say thank you. Thank you for looking out for my health. There's a difference between bullying someone because they're overweight or they're addicted to drugs versus going, hey, man. You, so here's, here's the thing that I feel like some people might not understand over Instagram when I say things like, man, it's not okay to, okay, this is my opinion. It's not okay to be a long-term drug addict. It's not okay to be a long-term person who's obese. Things happen. I don't know what's happened in your life to put you into this position. I, I don't, and I don't want to pretend to know. But my message is this, you could be so much happier and healthier. And if I say you're perfect the way you are, I am robbing you of what you could be. I, I don't believe in bullying people. I don't believe in shaming people. But I believe in being honest with them. And the moment you're satisfied with your current state, it, it hurts to see that. Because I know that you can be so much happier and you would be so much greater if you did X, Y, and Z. And that's no longer my opinion. That These are, these are facts. This, this is what a biologist would tell you. This is what a medical doctor would tell you. This is what a psychologist, what a psychiatrist, what a counselor would tell you. 
I can't tell you you're perfect the way you are because you could be so much happier and healthier. And if I do, if I come between you and your growth, I can't sleep well at night. I would rather tell you, hey man, don't be satisfied with this and have you be a little upset and have you be uncomfortable than do the opposite. Folks, we have ideals in our lives, right? We have ideals. There's the ideal Daniel one hour from now. There's the ideal Daniel a week from now, a month from now, five years from now. There's certain things that you want, right? And it's important to have an ideal. And I'm, I'm worried that a lot of people, God bless Jordan Peterson, he says, man, you got to aim. You got to have a goal in life. Because if you don't have a goal, you're fine with your current situation. But if I close my eyes and I have an ideal and I have a goal of looking a certain way and I'm feeling a certain way, and if I don't feel that way, that brings pain and sadness and sorrow. So now I can use that as motivation to close that gap between who I am and who I'd like to be. One, one thing that I, I fear is happening is a lot of people aren't focusing on an ideal. They're going, I'm fine the way I am. And anybody else who says I should lose weight, they're shaming me. It's like, maybe you're fine. Maybe you're fine. But why not be excellent? Why not be exceptional? Why not be fantastic? And, and that doesn't mean you have to be the way that these Instagram models are, but that means in, in whatever picture that you deem appropriate, that you deem necessary with respect to a mental health prof professional or medical practitioner's opinion. You're not perfect the way you are because you could be so much greater than you could be. And that, that makes people uncomfortable. It makes people sad. It makes people upset. Daniel, why can't you say I'm beautiful the way that I am? It's like, you're, you're all right the way that you are. But my worry is at the moment I say you're perfect like this, you won't try to reach for greater. Listen, and there's nothing wrong with being settled and with being satisfied. And, and there's, I believe that if you're too ambitious and you're always trying to get better, that is its negative size too, don't get me wrong. But if I'm talking about the extreme, if I'm talking about the hardcore drug addict, the person who's obese, the person on the other side who is anorexic, who has eating disorders, if a person who has eating disorders comes to me and says, Daniel, my family thinks there's something wrong with me. What do you think? If I was to spare her feelings in that moment and go, no, you're perfect the way you are. Am I a true friend? Is that what a genuine person does? Or do you look at them and you go, I think you need help. You're asking for my opinion. I'm saying this from a place of love. I, I study this stuff. I look at this stuff. I'm looking at you. I'm judging you. You don't look yourself. In my opinion, now that you've asked, I think you can really benefit from, from getting some help. We're getting to a place, folks, where counselors, psychologists, psychiatrists, nurses, medical doctors are getting criticism for coming out and talking about health, facts, and biology. This isn't me making it up. This is a true story. There's a doctor that I follow. His name's Dr. Mike. Very good looking dude. Uh, awesome, knowledgeable, and he looks young as hell too. He does a bunch of different talks about this and that and health and whatnot and exercise routines and the importance of sleep and caffeine. And he did a series of videos about diets, different diets that you can try. And the very fact that he made videos about diets, people were insinuating Dr. Mike is fat phobic. They're like, yeah, he's a great guy. He seems very knowledgeable, but it's a shame that he constantly wants people to lose weight. And I'm, and I'm sitting there and I'm going, what kind of a world are we living in? Where you look at the medical practice. I get if I say something and I come out and I make some sort of a claim and you go, Daniel, you're not a doctor, you're not a psychologist. Okay, now we can have a discussion. You're looking at the medical doctor who said that, hey, you could try different diets, you don't want your weight to be too high and he's fat phobic? My intention is never in the wrong place. The doctor's intention is not in the wrong place. What I, I want everyone who thinks that way to please take a long look in the mirror and go, I am prioritizing my feelings over my health. Am I okay with it? Answer that question. Honestly, honestly answer that question. If the answer is yes, I've got nothing to say to you and I will never, ever, ever go up to someone who's overweight or smoking cigarettes or do hardcore drugs and say, do you know how unhealthy that is for you? You're a grown adult. You've made your own decision. It is what it is. If you want to talk about it, if, if you want to ask for my opinion, but if you come out on social media 
and state I'm perfect the way that I look, I'm healthy, anyone who tells me otherwise is fat phobic, it's free game. You threw the first punch, it's free game. Anything after that, once again, I will never target the individual. I will never, like um, I was talking to someone and um, about like this, this thing I put on my store and he was like, uh, Dan, I was like, you've got to be careful not to offend people, man. And I was like, dude, I was like, I would never target someone out in terms of like, because they're obese, because they're addicted to drugs, because they have some problem and go, oh, you're a terrible person because you're doing this and this. Like, no, I would just say it generally. I would just talk about the idea. I'd say, hey guys, praising people for doing something unhealthy is not a good thing. And he responded with saying something like, um, oh, okay, so I get it. So you just, instead of offending one person, you just offend everybody, that's great. Which got me into this mindset and I, and I didn't get to tell him this. I was like, dude, there's no way that I could ever do this without offending anyone. The moment I say, hey man, uh, I'm, I shouldn't use that word, but I'm going to use this word. I think, no, I'm not gonna use that word because I'm a gentleman. To not put on a seatbelt when you're driving, I think is a really, really, really bad idea. If you disagree with me, that might offend you. If I say, hey man, anyone who doesn't put on a seatbelt when they drive is an idiot, well, now you're offended if you don't put on a seatbelt. If I say anyone who chooses not to get vaccinated is an idiot, if you choose not to get vaccinated, that, that's mean, I'm, I'm attacking you, right? So naturally you're gonna get offended. My message is this, folks, there's no way, there's literally no way I can say anything without offending someone at a complex controversial level. It is not possible at all, in my opinion. And I try and I'm very careful with my words, very careful with my words. And still I have people reaching out to me who get offended. If you get offended easily, if you are a sensitive person, you, you might not wanna to listen to this podcast. If one day I am a medical practitioner, if I become a doctor or a counselor or something in that line, It'll be very much the same. I will tell people what they need to hear. I won't have suicidal patients walking out of my, my counseling room. My secretary goes, hey, how are they? Oh, I mean, it's pretty bad. They want to kill themselves. Oh, well, God, what did you tell them? I, I mean, I didn't want to panic them. So I said, everything's okay. And I said, I'll see them next week. I, I understand it's a hyperbole and I, exam I, I understand I'm exaggerating here, but I, I'm telling you, I'm worried. I'm worried about the people who prioritize feelings over health especially if those people are our doctors, our counselors, our, our medical practitioners. That worries me. Because if there's one thing that a person deserves, if they're not in a great place, is for others to be honest with them. And if you're not, you are doing them a disservice. I stand by anything that I have ever said. That doesn't mean I don't change my mind. That doesn't mean I'm not wrong. But that means, man, if I come out and say, if you pray someone, who is for hardcore being addicted to drugs and that's okay, for being totally obese, that's okay, for beating his wife, that's, ah, oh, she had it coming, she talks too much. I, no. If you've got nothing nice to say, well, don't say anything at all. I agree. But people are saying nice things. People are praising behavior that should not be praised. And when you study ABA, Applied Behavioral Analysis, you study behavioral conditioning and operant conditioning, you learn whether you're talking about a child, whether you're talking about a dog, whether you're talking about your husband, your boyfriend, your partner. When you praise behavior subconsciously at, at, at some sort of level, in our biological processing, we go, this was praised, so I should probably do this again. At anything, at any level, when you praise behavior, do not praise behavior that you do not want to see repeated. That's not my opinion. That's a, that's a fact. Actually, I shouldn't say fact, but, but that's a, a statement that you will hear from a plethora of people from a plethora of different genres. Philosophy, psychology, sociology. You do not reward people for engaging in un, for an unharmful behavior. I would never message someone and go, hey, you're a piece of garbage for being overweight. No. But the fact that you go out of your way you don't think that she looks great, but you go out of your way for pity to go, I think you look great. You're, you're doing a disservice and you're putting them on such a pedestal of fabricated compliments that when the first person is real with her, it's going to shatter that person because you've set them up. You've given them 20 compliments. So now they don't know what criticism looks like. They don't know what negativity looks like and you're doing them an absolute disservice. You can disagree with me, that's fine, but, but this, is, this is something that I feel, folks, why am I in psychology? 
for God's sakes, I'm here to look for people's health, for, for people's health and, and physical health and mental health. How can I be a psychology student and in the same breath be okay and turn a blind eye to people praising that sort of stuff? Bad behavior is bad behavior. And you can tell me 2 plus 2 equals 5 all you want, but that doesn't mean it's true. And you could tell me, man, a woman can be fit any way that she likes. You don't know if she's fit or not. That's between her and her doctor. Brother, you know, it doesn't take a scientist to look at a picture of Cristiano Ronaldo and look at a picture of someone who drinks five and six days a week and is overweight and go, you're not as healthy as you could be. I will keep this too. Remember this episode. When I grow up, whatever profession I go into, remember this episode. I'm not a braggadocious person, or so I think. I've got many faults, but if there's one thing that I believe in, it is the health of the individual. And if there's one thing that I will forever praise, it's not that all my ideas are correct. It's not that I always know what to say in every situation. It's not that I can answer all these questions, but it's this. At a young age, I had a consistent ideology and a consistent logic with health. The reason why I'm in psychology is to look out for people's health and well-being. I am doing that right now. At the age of 21, this is my path. I am doing something that is congruent with my character. 5, 10, 15 years from now, if I look back on this podcast, even if I disagree with a plethora of things that I've ever said, I can look back on this and go, my motives never ever changed. From day one, I was looking out for your well-being, your mental health, and your happiness. And when I'm whatever position and profession, I promise you, I promise you, my motives will be exactly the same. The reasons why I started will, will, will not have changed. I hope you enjoyed listening, folks. This is something that, that was really near and dear to my heart. I know that weight is a sensitive topic, especially for women, rightfully so. But I don't think that makes it an excuse to go, oh man, let's just not say, let's give them a free pass. Because if you genuinely care about people, you, you will call them out when you see them doing something wrong. If, A, they ask for your opinion, or B, they come out and they state it as a fact. They're not saying, this is, this is how it is, and anyone who disagrees is an idiot. It's like, okay, fair game. Here's what I think. I thank you for sticking with me. I really, really appreciate it. I, if there's anything that I want to do is I just want to inspire critical thinking, and I want to learn a little bit more every single day. My motives haven't changed. This podcast hasn't changed. Maybe I've matured. I've changed my views on a few things. But, but this idea of wanting to share my thoughts, wanting to disagree with people, wanting to learn more and become educated, that hasn't changed a single bit. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Apple, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, you know what it is. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. Have some vitamins, man. Have some vitamins. Exercise. Take care of yourselves. Put on seatbelts when you're driving. Eat healthy. Exercise. Take the vaccine. If you can prevent harm, my opinion, do your, do your part to prevent harm. I care for you. I might not even know you if you're listening to this podcast, but I still care for you. And I know that you have people who care for you, and they'd really appreciate it if you took care of yourself. Take care, everybody. Have an amazing day.